Coach Mason here with Dr. Dish Basketball. I am super excited to be joined by one of my good friends, amazing athlete, amazing basketball player, even better person. My man, how are you doing? I'm good, man. I definitely can't call it, man. Just taking life day by day, trying to find enjoyability, if that's even a real word, you know, life right now, man, because it's been a crazy time. Definitely. So tell uh, people a little bit about where you're at right now. So uh, currently, you know, I live in Milan, me and my fiance, you know, I'm expecting, uh, we're expecting our first child. So I'm, I'm here, I'm here until that happens and, and longer. So um, just trying to take things day by day, stay in shape. It's, it's tough, man. It's been, it's been weird. It's been weird these last couple of months. I can only imagine. I mean, especially with, like you mentioned, the pandemic and, um, you know, all of the social injustice going on. I mean, it's crazy all over the world. And for you, uh, you know, to be a person born and raised in, in America, um, you know, itself, um, you know, to be in Italy right now, try to deal with starting a family and in your career and all the other stuff going on, I can only imagine it being difficult. Now, um, talk a little bit, you have a really unique story. Um, I, I, I know a little bit about it, obviously, <laughs> but talk a little bit about your basketball journey from um, college to the pros. I mean, you, you really... Um, kind of started from the bottom, and honestly, you're one of the hardest working people that I know, and have gotten your, yourself to a really successful level. So uh, take your time, start from you know college, and, and, and work your way in some of the struggles and stuff that you, you've been through to get to the point where we're at today. Yeah, so you know, initially coming out of college, you know, I, you know, I finished at Division Two, so it wasn't that highly touted of a school. I had uh, I played real well my senior season. Um, was pre I mean, was a postseason third team All American, uh, or was it no? Yeah, third team All American, and then um, following that, I got my first job in Uruguay, which was horrible. Ended up breaking my wrist. Uh, the first before the season even started, broke my wrist. Played a few games with broke wrist, and I ended up going home. Um, then the next season, uh, nobody wanted me, so I ended up going to uh, Austria with our with our good friend JoJo. And um, and working out with his team, his team actually gave me like a week by week um, uh, contract where they're paying me like 200 euros a, a week, which was motherfuckers well, McDonald's make more than that, man. It's crazy to think that I was playing for that, but I was. And then um, they ended up cutting me, and then I was in Germany for a little while in six league Regionalia, which is like the worst basketball on earth. You're playing with like mechanics and. <laughs> and I can attest to that. I know, I know guys that have. That's true. I can attest to it. But I was, you know, I was playing. You know, I make a little bit more money there, but I was still playing. And then I thought I had an opportunity to go to a pro A team, Nuremberg, but they end up once I I got out of the, out of the contract with them, they end up uh, reneging and just leaving me out, you know, out to dry. And then I lived on an army base for for like um, a month and a half. You know, not not wanting to come home because if I went home, I knew my career would be over, essentially. So I lived on an Army base in Wiesbaden. And, and it was crazy because people don't even know this. I actually forgot this point in my, in you know, on my, on my channel. But you're a big part of the reason why my, my, why my career continued. Because you sent me that email full of the list of agents. And I called and, and emailed every one of those agents that you sent me. And only one replied. And that was Lothar. Lothar. But if not for you sending me that list, my, I, then I'd probably be working at, at a Ford plant somewhere right now. Like, I don't know what I'd be doing. But, but after, that, after that agent, you know, Lothar hit me back. Uh, he got me a job playing on uh, the second team of a team in Finland. Worked my way up, got on the first team. They were a Euro Cup team. Um, then after that, you know, it was pretty much – it wasn't smooth selling. It was still rocky, but – I slowly started to progress every year. You know, the next year I played on a decent team where I was featured. Then I went back to that team, the first team that gave me an opportunity. And um, they were playing in VTB. And I kind of showed my ass in VTB, the, you know, the last few games before the team went bankrupt. And then from there I went to Italy, second league, which was a more respected league, made the, had, was making the most money I had at this point. And then following that season, I thought I was going to be in top league Italy because I destroyed, but it didn't happen. I went to Pro A France. Still a real good, you know, a real good jump. Uh, I didn't play so well. It was a real situation with the coach. Didn't really rock with me, but 
even even that being said, God can't and can't never stop with us. You know what he got planned for you. So from there, I went to the BTB, which was you know uh, a really respected league, led the league in rebounding, and that was the year that really broke the camel's back. When I led that, when I led the BTB in in, in rebounding, then my name was just out there. All you know, everybody wanted to give me an opportunity. So I left there, came to Italy, top league, canceled. Uh, had the best season of my career up until this point. At one point, I was almost having triple double to start the season, which was wow. like out of body for me. <laughs> you know, but I was playing well. I had a coach who really trusted me, who really believed in me, and you know, rock with me, man. My favorite coach to this day, Coach P. He's a, a Russian guy. But um, and then after that, you know, I'm here now. I'm playing Euro Cup, you know, for Rare Valencia, a team who just won the the Italian uh, championship the year before. We won the Cup championship this year. Um, we're competing. We're in. The, we're going to the Elite Eight of the Euro Cup this year before the pandemic started. So you know, it was a real good team, really good, uh, really good um, atmosphere. The the players were good. You know, I played with countless NBA guys. You know, I had Austin Day, um, the Mini Mamba, Andrew Kyle Luck. You know, we had a, a ton of good guys, man. So you got, you know, you guys were listening. You you know the caliber of basketball I'm talking about. Yeah, man, that's a unique story. I mean, I don't think a lot of people have lived on an army base, have just stayed not knowing what they were going to do, what their next step is. But, you know, through all that, you were able to obviously continue to work, believe in yourself, which is a, a big thing I talk to a lot of players uh, about that follow us, and that's huge. Now, with that being said, you know, you mentioned a little bit about me sending you a list of agents, and I know that that was a very, 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 very small part <laughs> in your successful journey. You know, for me personally, um, I was happy to do that. Part of the reason why I did do that to you, I had a t ton of people at that moment in time when I was playing that would ask for agent information and all that good stuff. And I was always hesitant on giving that information out because it sounds really good to a lot of people to, to get a name and, and reach out, but a lot of people don't want to put in the work, effort, and energy to get there. And one thing I always noticed about you was that you continued to work hard. You continued to stay in a gym even if the opportunity wasn't there, you were always prepared. And for me, I knew if this guy gets a chance, he's really going to take off. I mean, if people can see right now, you're built like a rock. You're, you're constantly <laughs> working out all the time. And I knew that if you had that opportunity, you would be successful. For me, it was super small to do that. And, and again, the work was on your shoulders to get to where you want because a, a text or email is just what it is. Everything else you do after that is big. Now, with that being said, you know, um, we're in a unique situation where uh, everything is shut down here in the States. They're just starting to kind of open things up. I know it's been really crazy over in Italy. Talk a little bit about how you're maintaining, staying in shape, how you're working out your basketball skills still, um, and, you know, what the, the, current, the current situation is with facilities and gyms where you're living at. Yeah, so, you know, we've been open a little bit longer. Um, I think it's been almost <clears> – <throat> Two weeks now we've been open, but not everything is open. Um, gyms aren't open. Um, fitness centers aren't open um, because of the social distancing and then having, you know, the repetition of cleaning things and, and such like that. So it, that stuff's not going to open for a while. But um, me personally, um, I have, you know, I kind of prep myself for it mentally. When I, when I first started heard, hearing about what was going on, I went on Amazon and started ordering stuff like that. Like that. So I had, you know, so much workout equipment already at home. And then um, my brother-in-law, he actually has like a, a weight, uh, like a whole weight set uh, behind their house. And they live right across the street from us. So every day I'm over there um, doing, you know, strength stuff. And then I have like uh, ladders and resistant bands and stuff like that. I go to the park, uh, which is behind my house. And um, I work on agility, work on try to try to stay as conditioned as possible because, you know, that's one thing that you really don't get. You really, it's hard to get when you're not playing basketball is that conditioning. So right. I'm always outside. Um, I'm not just running with it, with, without a purpose. You know, I do the ladder. I do 10-yard uh, wind sprints, 20-yard wind sprints, 30-yard wind sprints. And then, um, you know, I do my, my, my weights. And then I do my basketball. So with my basketball stuff, uh, I don't, you know, it's hard to really do anything without a gym. The courts out here got eight foot rims, so I really, I really can't get it in out there. So usually, majority of my basketball stuff is more so ball handling and balance. Um, for ball handling, I usually like I might go on YouTube and find like a field handy workout or or in the lab workout. Or somebody, one of these dudes who who, who are who are professional trainers, and I just follow their workouts. You know, they got a lot of good content. 
and it's it helps. You know, it's not just like for kids or for pros. You know, it, it's universal. Right. And my, you know, my ball handling's got a lot better. You know, I got the heavy ball. I have you know two two league uh, two of the league balls, and I just work, man. I just work. I find a way. When there's That's no awesome, way. man. I mean, we have a ton of kids that uh, will reach out to us and say, "Hey, I've been stuck at home for you know two three weeks. I haven't been able to do anything basketball related. The gyms are closed." And to me, that's just um, an excuse not to get better. You know, obviously, we're accustomed to um, all the great things, whether that's a lifetime membership or a high school gym being open or having a doctor just shooting machine um, or having a personal trainer or whatever the case may be. But if you still want to put in the work and get better, even if you're limited or all those things are taken care of, you're a perfect example of how people can still work on their game, work on their strength, work on their agility, their coordination, their balance, their ball handling work on even their form shooting. You know, there's still ways to get better during this period of time. Um, and I appreciate you sharing that. We have a lot of kids out there um, that are working and shout out to them. I mean, this is going to be a piece of their lives that they'll always remember uh, moving forward in their basketball career. And it's a great opportunity, I think, too, for people to do a little bit of self-evaluation of, of who they are as an athlete and a basketball player and what they need to work on. So it's a good time for them. Now, with that being said, um, we're hoping that this pandemic uh, ends soon and, and people get healthy and, and everybody can get back to their regular lives. What's some personal goals for you, um, you know, this next year and then, you know, um, the, the following few years in your basketball career? Uh, you know, my personal goal. So when I started my career, I actually, where I actually wrote down goals of what I wanted to attain. And the top thing on that list is, playing at the highest level I possibly can. So if it's not the NBA, then, it, you know, it's EuroLeague. And that's been a big goal of mine is to get the EuroLeague uh, right now. And then also to play in the Olympics for uh, for Niger For those who don't know, I'm, uh, my father is Nigerian. I have, I have two passports, dual citizenship. And I actually went to a training camp for the World for the World Cup last summer with uh, Team Nigeria. But, but I couldn't – I had a family issue, so I couldn't go. But to play in the Olympics – uh, is a big dream of mine. You know, that's the biggest stage of basketball in the world. You can't even – nothing even comes close to, to the amount of fans that are involved in watching that. So that's my main goal is the Olympics and then um, playing uh, at the highest level I possibly can. That's awesome, man. Well, I honestly, I believe in you. I think you can get there. Your work ethic and your mindset is, is different than a lot of people, so I'm sure uh, you'll continue to keep attaining those goals. Now, I'm going to put you on spot a little bit here. Um, tell me one – of your best experiences playing over overseas? It can be anything. It can be an on-court experience. It can be an off-court experience. Tell me one of the best experiences you had playing overseas. So my best experience for sure was playing in Russia when I was in the VTB with Kazakhstan and Astana. But um, it was because up to that point, and even now, I've never had a team where I genuinely liked every play, and I had a good time with all of them. Just, just that year as a whole, like I, like, even to this day, I still talk to them daily. Like, I, there's very few – like, if those who play professional basketball know that overseas that there's very few guys you keep in contact after you move on with, you know, after you move on from that. Season. And I talk to these guys every day still. They're like brothers. And that was my, my funnest – that was the most fun I ever had for the pro. Was that yo? We didn't, we didn't, we didn't win a whole lot of games. It was I enjoyed those guys, you know, to, on a whole another level. That's awesome, man. I know how those uh, team camaraderie and, and uh, you know the the relationships that you build, how important they are. So um, I have so many memories. We got a lot of mutual friends. I played my rookie year with Jamar Diggs. We had him on too. We talk about it all the time, man, and it seems just like yesterday, and that was almost, you know, eight years ago for me. So, um, you know, there'll be memories that last a lifetime, a lifetime man. With that being said, um, shout out to you for taking taking the time. I know there's a big hour difference, um, you know, there in Italy. I know that you got a baby on the way. You got a lot of people that need you over there. So thank you for taking the time to, to talk with us and tell us a little bit about who you are, what you, you went through, your training. Uh, what you stand for, and, and, and a little bit about your career as well. For people uh, that aren't currently following you right now, um, let us know your your social handles, and then I know that you're also a big YouTuber as well, kind of documenting your life over there and some cool, some other cool things. 
So go ahead and give us a, a shout out on that. Yeah, so uh, if you're not following me on IG, you can follow me on, on IG at I-K-E-U-D-A-N-O-H. That's E-K Udano. And then my YouTube, uh, it's Life Keezy, L-I-F-E-O-S-K-E-A-S-Y. Um, on, my, on that channel, I pretty much give information to the, to the next generation of basketball players who are aspiring to be professional basketball, basketball players overseas. And I try to give them the game that I wish I would have had you know, starting my career, you know, do's and don'ts, um, things to look for, you know, whether it be an agent or a team or a coach, just try to give you guys as much information as I can because, you know, you can never really be truly prepared for something that you've never been through. That's awesome, man. And he's not lying. I've checked out all his videos. Uh, interesting guy. He keeps it real 100. So if you're looking for something, you know, in that sense unfiltered, make sure you check him out. Um, as far as Dr. Dish Basketball, if you are looking for unique ways to train and get better, make sure that you follow us at Dr. Dish B-Ball on all social channels. We also have a YouTube, Dr. Dish Basketball, where we put out a ton of drills, a ton of co content every single day. So make sure that you follow us on that. Again, EK, thank you for your time jumping on with us. We really appreciate you, my man. No problem, man. I appreciate you guys having me. All right.